Welcome back, everybody, for more campaign fun. We have finished El Cid, and now we will go around 50 years later to Barbarossa, the first in our duet of Third Crusade campaigns, the other being Saladin. This one starts a bit earlier, and I think eh, it makes a bit more sense if you do Barbarossa and then Saladin. You, I, but, you know, if you're going chronologically, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, this classic Age of Kings campaign. I'm sure many, many, many of you have played it before. But we're doing it together now. Let's go. Holy Roman Emperor. So, you have come to hear the tale of Frederick Barbarossa. Hmm? Better order us another round. Maybe three. You see, it is a great tale. But then again, everything about the man is great. Barbarossa was a man of great appetites. Great ambitions and a great red beard. But the question, huh? <laughs> the question you want to know was that enough? Is the will of one man enough to forge an empire? For there was no Holy Roman Empire at that time, only a gaggle of quarreling city states. These dubiously loyal princedoms were more interested in a loose confederation than a unified empire. But Barbarossa, he believed that he was the emperor by the will of God, and he intended to bring the Holy Roman Empire back to its former glory. Make the HRE great again. Princes? Well, so be it. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Thanks, D.E. Capture and garrison in your monasteries four of the six relics from the surrounding German duchies. Barbarossa has access to all Imperial Age technologies, but his pop limit is kept to one, two, five. Uh, because Barbarossa faces so many enemies, it would be wise to dispose of one or two early before they become a real threat. We're definitely going to do this. Remember, only monks can transport and garrison relics. Take care to have a monk nearby to transport the relics that you locate. And you can tell if an enemy monastery is a relic of the flag on it. Duh. Okay, so Barbarossa's duchy is surrounded on all sides by hostile enemies. We're kind of actually on a, an island in the middle of the map. Well, it's, it's, it's surrounded by rivers, I guess. It's not like an island island. Anyway, to the southeast is Austria. They are Goths. And they make swordsmen. They have a castle. Uh, Bavaria is to the south, and they are walled. Saxony is to the north. They're walled and have a castle. Probably the strongest enemy. Lorraine is to the northwest. They are... Eh, lots of spearmen, knights, that sort of thing. Bohemia is weak initially, but they're the only one that starts in the castle age uh, alongside you. And they have... they're Slavs. And uh, Burgundians are to the southwest. They are Franks. And to the east, towards Hungary, Cumin warriors have been spotted. So, this one does have a... Uh, achievement. And that achievement is to defeat everybody instead of getting the relics. So that's what we're going to do. It might seem really hard considering it's a 1v6, but it's not that bad. This is definitely one of my favorite campaigns. I mean, nostalgia factor aside, I, I think the, the mission design is pretty varied. Obviously, we will be playing as the Rootin' Tootin' Teutons. Your Majesty, this way leads east to Hungary. We must be careful. There are humans in that direction. I thought they were Mongols. Oh, God damn it. Freaking lamers. Killed my sheep. Anywho, um. Your Majesty, these Cuman warriors say that they will join our army for 200 gold. Sounds like fun on a bun. Wise choice. So here, uh, if you played the original one, oh, 
we will see that this is already a fairly big change. I mean, it's, I guess... Oh god, I'm housed now. Um, so, it, regardless of if you're going to go the relic route or try and get the achievement by defeating everybody, uh, it's a great idea to go ahead and get these Kumin mercenaries. They used to be Mongols, but that is technically anachronistic as the Mongol invasion happened, uh, I think, like 50 years or so after Barbarossa's time. So the Kumans would be making more sense. But you see, like, everyone's pretty weak. They're either in Feudal or Castle Age. And we have some elite Kipchaks, some Cav Archers. All that good stuff. But mostly the Siege Onagers. And we're just going to start leveling people. And first on our list will be Bohemia. That's why I got the market right away. Come on, Teutons! Nice. Teutons, uh, their team bonus is that they inherently resist conversions. But yeah, at least in terms of like how they start, uh, Bohemia pretty much just starts with a town center, a monastery, and a monk. So they, they have so very little to start with, but obviously they'll, they'll build up pretty quickly. Anyway. Power of Siege Onagers. Seems good, man. Just making sure we don't nuke our own troops. Oop. Here comes Lorraine. Lorraine, if you're thinking, I don't remember those guys, that is because they used to be called Schwabia. But since Schwabia is, I believe, to the southwest, Lorraine makes more geographic sense, considering they're position on the map. Also, Bohemia used to be Teutons because, you know, Slavs didn't exist in the game. Anyway, if this doesn't completely defeat them, it's uh, going to be the next best thing. <laughs> but we're not going to grab the relic because uh, we're defeating everybody. I mean, I have all the achievements already, so... It Nothing is going to, like, pop up or anything. But I still want to at least be able to show you guys how to do it. And, you know, just get our economy up and running slowly but steadily. So we could go this way to Austria or this way to Saxony. But both those guys have castles. They're actually the exact two enemies that have castles. So instead we're going to rotate. We're going to skip Austria and rotate a bit further south to Bohemia. Or no, uh, Bavaria, the other B1. Actually, no, Burgundy's B2. All the all the B enemies. Also start to get the occasional wall in. Just to make sure we're extra safe. And obviously, the 125 pop limit is a new addition with DE because you... Uh, back in Age of Kings, every scenario had a 75 pop limit. Because that was the standard. But most campaigns now have a higher pop limit, which is something for which I am duly grateful. Sorry, Ornlu. That wasn't the uh, that wasn't the greatest attempt ever. So, Bavaria will have some walls and towers, but some siege onagers will make very short work of them because they're still in feudal age. So those these guys only have 700 HP. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Not too much of a concern. Oh, there's more sheep here. Oh, 
Hopefully that's fully walled. But yeah, in any scenario where you're facing a ton of enemies all at the same time, it is highly recommended that you uh, attack multiple quickly. I mean, there are several other campaigns that are or campaign scenarios that are like this, you know, there and abouts. Oh, whoops. Fire? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, these guys just don't stand a chance against the Siege Onagers. And you can get them with your starting resources, too. You can just build a market and then tribute them the, uh, the gold. So if you just know where they are, which I obviously do. No! An archer! Oh, wait, can you guys get the monk, please? Oh, god damn it. Not a Kipchak! But the unit's so not very used. What? He's, he's looking the other way. He's going for the full trick shots. Oh yeah, this one archer. Uh, where are my knights? Perfect. Has anyone gotten up to Castle Age yet? Just Bohemia. But they started in Castle Age. Also, none of your enemies build a navy. So you don't have to worry about landings. Just being housed, I guess. I thought I had built a house sooner. Whoops. Whoopsies. I wonder if that's Bohemia's last unit. There is another tower over here. There it is. Oh, here's some bills. I know I, I didn't kill that many villagers of theirs, so that's why I'm sta uh, hanging around still. I seem to remember Burgundy advancing to the Castle Age much faster in uh, Age of Conquerors, or even Age of Kings I played this way back in the day. Because we didn't get the Conquerors right when it came out. Probably got it a couple years later. Danger close. Anyway, we're full walled now. Oh, there's Bohemia. Told you that was probably their last unit, the, uh, the Scout Cavalry. Anyway, we'll rotate on over to Burgundy. If we're lucky, they won't have built a castle yet. All your enemies will build one castle. Unless they start with the castle, then it's, you know, they're, they're starting castle. Click up. I mean, you really haven't even built any army. Gonna go for Cavaliers. Because. Whoa! Hey! Oh, 
Oh, they, these guys don't even have upgrades. Beautiful farm placement. Tristan would be so proud. Anyway, moving right along. So yeah, it doesn't really matter if you haven't defeated the enemies, you know, completely. Just as long as you, you know, cripple them beyond any chance that they would ever come back. And there goes Bavaria. I have no idea what I just killed. But I killed some- Hey, dang! Whoa, 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 whoa! Damn it. So, yeah, I mean, eventually your units will die. Man, Kipchok suck. But that is okay. Well, at this point, it's okay. And everybody died. That's that's great. Usually I'm able to at least defeat uh, Burgundy and maybe even, uh, sh not Schwabia, uh, Lorraine now it's called. Uh, did I ever commission a blacksmith to be built? I guess I did not. Uh, work, please? I guess Saxony hit Castle Age when I wasn't paying attention. Oh! Jerk. Wow. But yeah, I mean, like, by the time they're getting Castle Age, we're getting Imperial Age. And as it happens, being an age up on your opponent is OP. He said as he lost a Cavalier to Spearman. But yeah, don't worry. We'll make some, uh, we'll make some Deus Volt Teutonic Knights. In uh, in this campaign, just not this scenario. Really want something that is mobile. All right. Looks like Lorraine hit Castle Age as well. And there is Austria. I don't think any of them ever advanced to Imperial Age. I mean, I usually win too quickly, so I don't even uh, notice ever. So, I mean, you guys can verify in the comments, but I'm pretty sure they don't ever go to Imperial Age, which honestly makes the scenario ultimately pretty trivial. Yeah, now you can see they're starting to attack us, but we're an imp. We don't care. Well, that's actually a fair amount of Mr. Pokey Pokes. But we're still fine. Come 
Pokemon. There we go. That is a lot of Munkers. Oh, feels Ornlu, man. Oh, oops. Let's get this tower. Honestly, like, I'm not even struggling with this, but normally it's even easier. But I just, you know, th threw away all my troops that I got from the, uh, the Kumans. Just because I am a dum-dum. And it's still not hard. Like I said, the only enemies that start with castles are Austria and Saxony. Everyone else will build a castle. Eventually. Come on. I mean, you can not stand under the castle fire if you really want. Teutons are kind of an interesting so I would say they're a little underpowered. Not, not too much. But people generally don't like them because they're very slow. I mean, that's like the thing. They're, they're a slow, you know, heavily armored sort of civilization with a strong defenses and economy. People like fast civs, you know, your Huns, Aztecs, that sort of thing, Mongols. But uh, I don't mind them. You just have to... You have to be aware of what your civilization is good at and not good at, and adjust your a play style accordingly. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, I got some paladins. But yeah, Teutons are one of the uh, two civilizations that have cavalry, but do not have husbandry. I'm not counting Kumans, since they essentially get it for free, and then one better. The other one being Vikings. Used to be Vietnamese as well, but they got husbandry in a, uh, I think the most recent change, as of recording this. Are you kidding me? We're gonna freaking get guard tower just for this one watchtower. Yeah, it turns out paladins are pretty good against castle age units. Can't believe I'm having to go through this. Die! There we go. And of course, you can even anachronistically get gunpowder in this uh, campaign, despite it not reaching Europe for an, uh, another few hundred years or so. Saxony's just trying to be as annoying as possible, man. Anyway, it's a nice consistency to have Burgundy as the same color as it is in the Joan of Arc campaign. I guess destroy the stable? I don't know what else they're going to have. Anyway, what I should be doing... Sure, let's get some let's get some Teutonic Knights just for the lols. That's actually quite a lot of long swordsmen. Not actually enough to be scary to fully upgraded Teuton Paladins, but you know. 
A for effort. You may be asking yourself at this point, Ornlu, why do you only have two stables? And the answer is, uh, there's zero good reason. <laughs> See a vill. They have an archer in somewhere? They have a barracks over here. There it goes. Burgundy. You can send these guys over uh, this away towards Austria, where we send these guys northwest to uh, Lorraine. I mean, the scenario would likely be at least somewhat challenging if your enemies ever got to Imperial Age, but they don't. At least as far as I'm aware. Sure. Oh, don't tell me they're going to have murder holes. Oh my god, of course they do. Come on, villagers. Come on. I don't want to get sappers. Value. Yeah, let's keep going this way. Food sell price is still super good. Eh, let's get crenellations, why not? These guys built their castle right here. Like I said, everybody either builds a castle or starts with one. Castles like right here. Right here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, I still have my men at arms from the start. Why are, you, why are you guys stopped? Oh, man. Oh, they're instantly rebuilding the castle? Kind of weird. Actually, can you range that? Nice. And should be dead pretty quick. There we go. Let's 
start on Saxony, who should be our last opponent. Oh yeah, everyone has one one relic, by the way. Well, except you, to start with. For some reason, and this has always been the case, uh, Saxony, they have a relic in their base, but they don't have a monk, and they don't. So they don't uh, they don't garrison the relic, but they have one. How's this going? Right, I should get Ironclad. It's a good upgrade. Oh man, Austria. Picking up all the relics I uh, knocked down. Okay, there goes Lorraine. Uh, Saxony's castle's like over here. Okay, what's that? Forward! Oh, they do garrison their relic. Huh, that must have changed in DE. It used that used to not be the case. Anyway, it should be like right here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or since this is the Teuton campaign, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure this campaign is especially popular with uh, all the German players. Because I am pretty sure that Germany is a plurality when it comes to AoE2 viewership. Like, they're the... AoE2 has the largest band base in Germany, I think. It's probably pretty close with the, the states numerically. But, it, like, the, the US has way more people than Germany, so it's definitely still feels more popular there. Freaking lumberjacks. <laughs> I like how I still have these men at arms alive. And the mangonel. What do these guys have left, man? Seriously. You guys even have any units? They have two long swordsmen and a barracks. That's definitely going to be what brings them back. Also, a third long swordsman. Ooh. I mean, I'm sure that the AI is, like, not going to resign as quickly because 
the uh, the goal in this scenario isn't to you know destroy all your enemies; it's to get up, get the relics. There we go. So there's no real point in having them resign quickly unless you're uh, you know going for the achievement like me. Even rebuilt a monastery. Pick off all these dumb stragglers. There's a crossbow over here. There's a tonic knight over here. Have you noticed that the units have weird outlines when they're on bridges? Maybe it's not all the time, but it definitely feels like sometimes. Okay, you go kill the random Teutonic Knight. Kill this market, I guess. Kill the monastery. Yeah, there's still that crossbowman over there. And the crossbowman over here, apparently. Where is this villager going? To build a mining camp. No. Okay, what else do they have? There is a cross movement that is conveniently right next to these paladins. There's a cross movement over here, which that paladin... Oh, here we go. What? He captured none of the holy relics. <laughs> also, he defeated all the enemies, but the game was still running. That's kind of weird. They have called Barbarossa the scourge of Europe, but he was a skilled diplomat. As he was a warrior. It was very diplomatic that game. Principalities with more than just a sword. He established a set of legal codes known as the land pieces. He helped the hungry by fixing an official price for grain after every harvest. The provinces of Germany quickly became the wealthiest and most powerful in Europe. The Holy Roman Empire was so successful, in fact, that it quickly became strong enough to expand. Okay. I guess Austria had the largest army, but that's not that's not a great KD for them. Saxony's wasn't great either. I mean, 558 to 109. Feels good, man. So that was Holy Roman Emperor. Next up will be Henry the Lion. See you guys then.